Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Ah, oh, Slate. Trujillo. Aren't the lights beautiful? Yeah. Trujillo, Dominican Republic. The neon lights and the jukeboxes and the dance palaces make you forget the kids scavenging in alleys and gutters, grinning at you, dancing for you, so you'll throw them a Yankee nickel. <laughs> now look at them. Raul Murado grew up like this. Uh-huh. And every time before this, when we tied up the bold venture in Trujillo's harbor, Raul would be waiting for us, but not this time. He'll be executed for murder tomorrow night. You think that's why his mother wrote to you, Slate? Come here because she thinks you can. Who knows help. what she thinks? I never talked to a woman before whose son was going to be executed. Whatever she wants, try to make it easy for her, huh, Slate? What am I? A one man army of angels? People start crying, they scream for Shannon. You have come all this way from Havana, Senor Slate, with this senorita. I am grateful. Please to go in and honor my house. Senor Murado, we, we don't know how to say this. We, we liked Raul. We're sorry he's going to... To die? Please, the old man, his father, is already mourning for the dead. To him, he says such a son is already dead. To him, it is not Raul who sits in prison and waits to die, but a stranger. Senora, we can only share your grief. There's not... My boy is innocent. I tell you this, Senor Slate, because I have looked into the heart of my son. He did not murder that girl, as they say. He did not kill. I tell you this. A mother tells you this. He did not kill. According to what we read in the Havana newspapers, he had a fair trial... They proved he... But you will unprove it, Senor Slate. You will do this for Raul, whom you loved, for the old man, for... Oh. Tell them. Tell them that they cannot kill a son. Go. Tell them. Slate. <sighs> All right. All right, I'll tell them. I'll go and tell them. Yeah, Danny. Drink it. You'll feel better. Thanks. <laughs> that nervous, huh? Can't hold a glass of water. Let me alone, Roy. You know what? I get nervous, too. Just watching you. Makes me think funny things about you. You're liable to run to the police and pound on your chest and say, don't execute Raul Morado. We planted the gun in his car. And part of the loot. The kid's innocent. Doesn't it worry you, Roy? Oh, it doesn't worry you, does it? That we killed that girl and Raoul didn't? You killed her, I didn't. What? You killed her. What did you say, Danny? Let me alone, will you? I thought you said I killed her, Danny. All right, all right, we both did. She was going to yell for help. And that kid's going to die for it tomorrow night. That's right. He's going to die tomorrow night. Just don't go to pieces, Danny. It wouldn't do. It just wouldn't do. <laughs> Boy Murado will be executed tomorrow night, Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. There is nothing that will stop it. 
even that you have imposed yourself upon me in my chambers, disturbed my judicial duties, you will not stop it. There's a rumor he's innocent, Senor Banyas. That's why we came to you. You were the prosecutor at his trial. Uh, we're not real happy to all the latest Dominican murders, Ibanez. We just scanned it in the papers. Who'd the boy kill? A young girl, Rosa Calea. He robbed the tourist shop of her father. The girl, Rosa, disturbed him. So he shot a bullet through her back. If you wish to delude yourself further, my secretary will give you the transcript of the trial. See how it is shut and open that the boy killed. We found the gun in his car and money stolen from the shop. You could give a word, senor. A word that could stop a kid's dying just for a couple of days, maybe, until we... Until you have convinced yourselves Raul Murado is a murderer? Why waste away your time? My time. Uh, let's get out of here, sailor. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go waste our time. We'll do it all over Trujillo. The police headquarters at Senor Caleo's shop, wherever you have to go to save a boy's life. <laughs> Senor, senorita, what may I offer for your pleasure? Senor Calaya? If, por favor, please observe these charming necklaces of coral chips from the reefs of Trujillo. It's about your daughter, Rosa. Raul Murado is going to die tomorrow night for your daughter's murder. See, si. yes, he will die. And I will sing a happy song. His mother said Raul didn't kill your daughter. A mother would say that. What would the father of a murdered daughter say? Mind if I look around, Senor Calaya? Uh, please, Senor Dale. My shop is at your command. I got a friend who wants something to send back to his sis in Kansas. A pillow or something. Embroidered, though. She's crazy for him. Take the liberty, Senor. Pick and choose. Thanks. And now, Senor, Senorita, you were saying goodbye to me? Let's get out of here, Slade. Uh, wait. Why do you want to know of my daughter? We just came from the office of Senor Ibanez. We read the transcript of Raoul's trial. He was found guilty, and, well, he probably is guilty. But this morning we saw his mother. She... See, of anguish I know. I'm sorry. Then why are you here? What happened the night your daughter was killed? Simply that my daughter was aroused from her reading upstairs in her room by a knock on the shop door. Since it was chilly in the store, she slipped on her coat and went down to the store. She was shot dead. See you later, Senor Calaya. I don't know what to get for my friend. I'll bring him back with me. Bueno, Senor Dale. You said she was wearing a coat. It was chilly in the store. I have said that. Yeah, you did. Well, sorry to bother you, Senor. Please understand. My daughter Rosa is dead. I have tried to rid myself of remembrances of her, even her clothes. Yes, the very coat and dress she wore when she died. All things of her I have given away, so that my grief will be less heavy. Who'd you give them to? To Martha, who lives in a shack of driftwood on the beach, to keep her warm. Is this not a present, senor, to give away clothes torn by a bullet in the back? Now, adios. <laughs> Get it, Slate. What's a girl who's been given some old clothes got to do with saving a boy's life? Well, how should I know? It's it's just that it bothers me it wasn't mentioned in the transcript of Raoul's trial. Why should it be mentioned? A coat and dress with a bullet hole in them. Clothes a girl died in. That makes for polite conversation with the kindly police folk. With us. It wasn't mentioned and it bothers me. If you don't like it, go find another hotel keeper. No, oh, I don't let this one out of my sight. Who knows? Maybe this martyr girl cooks a better tortilla. Doesn't everybody do... Drop it, Slate. Someone's crying. You hear it too, huh? Sounds like the girl. Yeah. Let's go dry our tears, huh, sailor? Don't beat me. Don't, don't beat me anymore. Take them. Take all of them. I don't want them anymore. Slate, she's been hurt. 
face, mouth. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't hit me no more. Please, please, no more. Now, no one's going to hurt you, Marta. Now, what happened to you? Who did this to you? You, you are not him. You are not him who wishes of me to be, to hurt, to, to bleed my mouth. He's a friend. We'll help you if we can. Who did this to you? I, I was walking out of an alley. He come in an alley with no sun, only the darkness. Who was it? He, he stood close to me. He, his head on my shoulder whispered in my ear. He said he'd give me ten dollars for the coat I wear, for the dress. Rosa Calais clothes? I, I scream. Then he beat me. Then he tried to tear them from me, but I scream and he run away and I scream and, and I scream over nothing. These the coat and dress? The ones Rosa's father gave you? Take them. Take all of them. They are the dead girl's clothes. I don't want them anymore. Oh, just the coat and dress, Marta. We'll need them, too. Oh, do something about it, huh, sailor? Just, just do something. <laughs> Aren't you going to talk to me, Slate? Slate. Sailor, why don't you just walk alone with your memories tonight? What's eating you? A boy named Raul Murado is going to be executed tomorrow. At 10 tomorrow night. Less than 24 hours from now. Or maybe a murder he didn't commit. You're going to prove that with that coat and dress? Hey, hey there. Wait up, huh? You two peddling clothes around here this time of night? What's on your mind, Buster? Me, I'm a shell for old clothes. I got a thing for them. Will a couple of bucks take the pain away from parting from that coat and dress? On your way. Well, let's do it nice. Money for you, clothes for me. No? Okay, no. I wanted to be nice. This ain't your knife, Buster. <laughs> hey, come back here, mister. You forgot the coat and dress. Why do you want them, Slate? I don't know. Maybe to prove a point to me, maybe... Wait a minute. Midnight, sailor. Twenty-two hours, and an innocent boy will be executed. And something else. Now I know he's innocent. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Hey, what time is it, Sailor? It's a little more than nine hours to go. I didn't ask you that. I said, what time is it? Why don't you go below and turn in? You've been walking around this boat all night. I need you to remind me of it, huh? Sailor, do you think Raoul killed that girl? You want an answer that'll make you feel good, or you just want an answer? All right, I'll tell you. I think he killed that girl. He's going to be executed for it at 10 o'clock. Put that girl's coat on again, Sailor. I got it on. Look, Slate, for the last six hours I've been wearing that girl's coat and the dead girl's dress because you made me. Because you've got a bright idea a boy's life is going to be saved by having me parade up and down in this coat and dress. What are you trying to build? He just said it. A boy's life. How? Because the bullet hole in the back of the dress matches the bullet hole in the back of the coat? So now you've got proof positive Rosa Kalea was shot in the back. This is common knowledge wherever Rosa Kalea is discussed. <sighs> that coat's got to mean something. It wasn't mentioned at the trial. Maybe Rosa's father forgot to mention the coat. Could be as simple as that. That's why a guy tried to slug me for it, huh? No bright remark from you, huh? Keep it that way, sailor. I'm going calling on a boy who didn't commit a murder. Oh, 
Why'd it come all the way up here, Roy? I thought you'd want to see Trujillo, Danny. And right here's the best place to look. El Monumente del Presidente. One of the highest. Ah, look at that nice old Trujillo, will you? Roy, listen. Look at it, Danny boy. Lean over and look. That's it. See? Down there, Avenida Princesa. Real famous street. How come you didn't get the coat and dress, Danny? I told you. One of the richest thoroughfares in the world, that street. You know, once you could have taken a guy as big as Shannon. I still can. Once you could have done it. You helped me kill Rosa Calea. You cracking on me? Come on. Come on, Roy. Cracking, huh? Can't afford it, Danny. I really can't. Roy. Roy. Roy, Roy don't, don't throw me over. Roy, no. 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 <laughs> I have arranged ten minutes for you with the murderer, Senor Shannon. Thanks, Abanez. In ten minutes, a clever man could put a reverse twist on the world. But you are not that clever, Senor Shannon. Ten minutes. No more. Raul? Raul. You are making a study, Senor? You're a man of intellect, a professor. You're making a story of the dead. I'm Slate Shannon, Raoul. You remember me? I remember no one. Nothing. Your mother... I told you, no one. Maybe you can remember this, Raoul. Did you kill that girl? Did you kill Rosa? They say to me, a girl is dead. They say to me, I kill. Her name is Rosa. Did you kill her? Maybe I remember. Maybe I kill her. Maybe I believe I kill her. All the ones outside say I kill. I do not question the outside, senor. Answer me, Raoul. Did you murder that girl? You have finished your amusement with me, senor. Then go away from me. Go away from me. I can't help you when you talk like that. Think of something to tell me, something I can go on. What happened with you that night she was killed? This I can remember. I danced with many girls. Did you have a gun when you left the dance? Linda girls. Very pretty girls. Why did you tell her to turn around before you shot her? Many dances, many lights, much music. Ah. And you really don't remember, Raoul. You don't remember a thing. I kill her. They ask me to say it. They say a man confesses before he's about to die. It makes to feel better. So I say it. I kill her. And I feel nada, nothing, nada, nada, nada. Can't you understand, Abanez? Look at that clock. There's only four hours left to save Raul's life. And you will not save him. You and the dead girl's coat and dress with a bullet hole in line. You do not comprehend that Raul Melrado was seen holding up the shop of Senor Claire. Who saw all that? I have told you. The transcript of the trial is told you. And now I will tell you again. The witnesses to the robbing and killing were two cooperative Americanos. Senor Roy Dale and Senor Danny Gar. They actually saw Raul kill the girl? Actually. They were sightseeing, looked in the closed shop window for a remembrance for people in something called Kansas. Saw inside Rosa with her hands in the air. Saw Raoul with the gun in her back and then heard the shot. Saw Rosa fall, ran for a policeman, found one, reported a murder, as should every good tourist. Why did someone beat up that girl, Marta, to get this coat and dress back? I do not know. I do not know. Why did someone try to take them away from me? I... My turn, Senor Abanez. He doesn't know, Slay. How did they know about that coat and dress the same time I did? I have said it. How did they know about it? How? What's the matter, Slay? Ah, I think I know how. Let's go. Now don't look at me like that. I said let's go. <laughs> Come on, open up. Open up. There's a light in the back of the store. Someone will probably... Oh, here comes somebody. I 
said someone's coming. Why doesn't he hurry? It's almost nine o'clock. I am sorry, but the store is already closed. For purchases, be here tomorrow. Who was in your shop yesterday, Senor Correa? What are you talking about? Who was in your shop yesterday? Answer me or sir, help me out. I don't care if you are the father of a girl who... Senor, please... Slade, leave him alone. Gracias, senorita. Mr. Shannon wants to know who was in your shop yesterday when we were in there. A man came in, said he was shopping for a friend. Who was the man? What are you getting cagey for, Calea? Answer it. Do not shout at me, senor. It was an Americano. A senor Roy Dale. Uh, Roy Dale. Yeah. Yeah, that's a name that brings a smile to our lips, doesn't it, sailor? I'll smile if you say so. See, I'm smiling. Now, why am I? Because senor Dale was a witness to the murder of your daughter, wasn't he, Calea? See, si. see, si, that is so, senor. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're smiling, sailor. Because we're going to give a boy back to his mother. You the cab? Uh-uh. Me either. You going someplace, Roy? What is this? Who are you? Let's go inside, I'll tell you. Come on, come on in. Now we can talk, Roy. Hey, fellas, fellas. Hey, how'd you get out here, sailor? You and your strong arm. I never got inside. All right, so I'm not a cab. May I come in? Thanks, fellas. You people clowns. Tell us a story, Roy. Uh, that makes you clowns. A story about the murder of Rosa Calea. It's on the record. Go buy an old newspaper. Oh, you tell us, honey. Huh, honey? Sure, what have I got to lose? I'll tell you. The kid that did it is going to die in, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe 15 minutes. The story. Story? A friend of mine and me were taking a walk. Danny Garvey, that's your friend? Him. Where is he now? I don't know. He's a tourist. Climbs high monuments. You need him? Just you. Go on. You were taking a walk. That's right. We passed Calais' shop. Look in the window, and there was this kid, Raul Morado, with a gun on the girl's back. You testified at the trial that the girl had her hands in the air. High in the air. And you saw Raul kill her, huh? Uh-huh. On your way out, will you rustle me up a cab? Sure. You don't have to point a gun at us. Your name's Shannon, isn't it? You're the guy who wound up with the girl's dress and coat. And you're on your way out. Yeah. Drop that gun. Drop it, or I'll break your arm. He will, too. Drop it, boy. He listens to me, Slade. All right, Roy. Over against that wall. You too, sailor. Hey, you got it mixed up, Slade. It's just him, he, him, uh, Roy you're after. Against the wall. Now, face the wall, sailor. Put your hands over your head. Hi, Roy. He's my boyfriend. Don't laugh. You ought to keep him tied to your straitjacket, lady. Look at her, Roy. Look at Sailor with her hands over her head. He's looking, he's looking. Look how her coat rises when she holds her hands in the air, Roy. Suppose I shot her in the back now. Her arms would go limp and her coat would drop. And the bullet hole in her coat would be a couple of inches lower than the one in her dress. Take his word for it, Roy. This is the only good dress I've got. I'm not with you, Shannon. You're still clowning. The bullet hole in Rose's coat was in line with the one in her dress. That means her hands weren't in the air like you testified. You lied because you killed her. Gun don't frighten me, Shannon. I'm coming after you. You're gonna shoot me? In cold blood? Keep coming. I like it this way. Me too. Just you and me and no gun. Let's get with it. I kill, Shannon. I kill like anything. Glad to meet you. Hey, sailor. What time is it? Don't get excited. The clock across the street says there's still five minutes. Hello. Hello. Get me Senor Abanez at Trujillo Penitentiary. Slate. Well, what can I do for you, madam? Look what Raoul gave me as a token of gratitude. Oh, Derringer. Oh, 
I thought it was a little gun. Well, that's what it is, Chowderhead. A Derringer's a little gun. Hey, it's a nice one. It's very old. Uh huh. It belonged to Raoul's father's 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 father, who was a bloodthirsty pirate who later settled down with a chicken on a farm. <laughs> you, you ought to be proud. Hey, no point that thing at me. Against the wall, Buster. Now put your hands over your head. Not like this. Keep them there. See how helpless you are, Slate. Helpless. You dropped your derringer, madam. If you stoop to pick it up, I'll kick you in the teeth. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Ventures.